Chris Steele and joining with me once again is Cameron Dunn with Live Sow Die and we conclude the end of racing for day six. It was supposed to be races nine and ten but unfortunately the weather didn't quite play part Cam and we only had race nine but what an exciting race it was. Oh fantastic, if you don't, if you don't like yachting today you'll never like it. You know, remind, it was very similar to that race with Ineos and uh, Luna Rossa way back in, the, in round robin two. It seems like a life ago. We were only talking three days ago about how maybe this racing was starting to get a little bit boring, no lead changes. If you won the start, the race was over. Wow, this last two days, and especially today, was just thrilling yachting. Yeah, I mean, such a different dynamic, I guess, on course C, um, very sort of southwest and shifty, patchy. Um, the top marks were tucked right in underneath North mm. Head and, and definitely in a lot less wind than what was at the bottom of the course. And once again, you know, the start seemed pretty pivotable. Um, both boats kind of came off the line. Emirates seems on to lured slightly ahead. The Italians were able to kind of hold them to that first boundary. Sort of pretty neutral at that point. It mm. didn't seem like one boat had more advantage than the other because when they tacked over, it was, yeah, Emirates seems New Zealand holding a slender lead. Um, but as they sort of got back towards the middle of the race course, a little bit of a right-hand shift and, and the Italians kind of were in a right, were right position to sort of take control from that point on. But I mean, we saw them do a bit of a split before the top mark. The Italians did one less manoeuvre, but only managed to go around the top mark one second in front. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. You know, great to see that. You know, I think yeah, the start was it would have been very uh, wouldn't have taken much of a shift to go either way. Strong, you know, Team New Zealand could have easily got rid of them with a with a couple of degrees more lefty. So it was a it was a pretty good start both ways really. Um, but yeah, Luna Rossa had that slight advantage at the top mark, and we saw a pass and then a pass back. So we've already seen a few passes before they've got around the bottom gate. And then, uh, you know, a fantastic match racing move by Luna Rossa at the bottom mark to extend their lead. Yeah, and I thought we were just on that. I mean, it was such a pivotal moment in the race because you sort of get the sense where the Italians, you know, in a lot of situations, I feel like they would have probably jived back to the right mark there and, and picked a, a sort of safe lane in and, mm. and expected the boat behind to follow. But they, they did a little bit more than what you would probably normally expect. They were aggressive and... And you know, did a really good job yeah, of it as well. They managed to sort of hold the Kiwis out um, past both gates, and then obviously when they jibed, the Kiwis were jibing into their gas, and they eked out a little bit there. And then coming into that bottom mark, they forced the Kiwis into a really tough manoeuvre where you're coming in tight, trying to go straight into attack, and yeah. and the advantage line jumped out quite significantly. Um, unfortunately, from that point on, there was a little bit of separation between the boats, bit of a split, and you sort of always had the feeling that. It didn't matter whether the Italians were necessarily always on the right side of the breeze or not, that separation was going to come back to haunt them later on in the race. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, I think we've seen it in the last two days now where Team New Zealand seem to have made a little jump upwind in relative performance versus Luna Rossa to me. You know, especially, I guess, in this more shifty conditions, they're, they're utilising their fast mode to get to the new shift really well. And it just sort of you get that feeling that they are always just knocking on the door. They're always able to catch back up or keep the pressure on Luna Rossa. And Luna Rossa make a small mistake, bang, they're going to take it. Where yeah. Team New Zealand get on the wrong side, a bit of a shift, it feels like they're fast enough to still hang in there and keep the race open. Yeah, I mean, it almost sort of seems like sometimes they don't even make a mistake. You know, the wind just shifts slightly towards the other side and, yeah. and the Kiwis are always right there, ready to pounce. Yeah. And, I guess that's a, a true testament to the, the package that the Emirates Team New yeah. Zealand guys have, have put out on the water. It's certainly fast. Mm. And like you said, it's versatile. They seem to be able to you know, sail the boat in a bunch of different modes they, across a range of conditions. And you know, they don't necessarily have to win the start. They just have to kind of keep the pressure on. And you know, they probably trailed for almost 90% of that oh. race. And they got that sort of one shift coming to the top mark. And man, it's pretty amazing to see how quickly that delta changes. You know, they go from being 50, 60, sometimes 100 metres behind to all of a sudden 200 metres in front and they never look back. I mean, I look at the delta at the end of that race, 30 seconds are behind. It's crazy to think that Luna Rossa led for probably 90% of yeah. the race. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's brutal for them, you know, for, for the Luna Rossa fans and, and the boat, you know, they you come to those decisions, you've got, to, you've got to cross in the middle of the course, you've got to make a decision right there, left or right. They thought they saw a bit of a light patch ahead of them. They, they chose the left, they backed themselves. It was wrong, you know, it, it happens. Yeah, and I guess, you know, going back to the difference in the performance of the two boats, you know, at some point you do have to take those risks, don't you? Because, I mean, they did a really nice job of extending and, you know, leading the whole way around the racetrack. Every time Timmy Zone got close, they managed to, you know, be aggressive enough to try and stretch out again. But 
but you know, it comes back down to those one or two situations of the race where as the boat in front and the boat behind is too close for you to really be that aggressive when you're on opposite tacks or jibes and and so they they try and do something and they back themselves to you know protect the left hand side of the race yeah. course which ultimately in hindsight was the was the wrong decision but well they um, actually in the in the beat before they did a similar tack on team new zealand but they didn't really nail the the, the tack and Team New Zealand almost got through to lure of them and yeah, popped very, out the other side. So this time way. Luna Rossa absolutely nailed their covering tack on them, which forced Team New Zealand straight away to tack back out to the right. And I bet they're regretting that now. They probably wish they'd stuffed that tack up a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's so hard to say. I mean, obviously we get the beauty of hindsight mm. and we can see, you know, where the decisions that are, are made are right and wrong. But I think, um, you know, one thing's for sure, you've got to give a lot of credit to the way both teams are sailed. I think particularly the, the Italians who clearly, you know, boat speed isn't, isn't as strong as they probably would have hoped. But they're giving themselves a chance in every sort of single yep. race. And then on the flip side to that, you know, Emirates Team New Zealand are doing more than enough to just keep themselves in touch and, and be in a position where, you know, if one sort of shift goes their way, they're in a position to pounce and from there they sort of never look back. Yeah, I think Team New Zealand have done a really nice job of in, of improving the performance of their boat and learning how to sail it and, and adjusting their tactics over this series, which we kind of knew was going to happen. They haven't been racing, so that was where they were always going to improve, yeah. and they're showing that. They're not getting off the start line well enough, and it's only small differences that are costing them. But, you know, they're lucky that they've got the pack. Well, not lucky. It's been good work for their campaign in the last few years that they do have a speed edge and they've got the boat to get them back. I think if Luna Rossa were in a, in a slightly faster boat than Team New Zealand, you know, it would have been a very, very different story this series, just the way they've been getting off the start line. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that brings us into tomorrow. Um, race 10, maybe race 11, if the yeah. Italians can get up. Um, it's St. Patrick's Day, you know, the viaduct down here is going to be absolutely humming with people. You know, Irish supporters, Kiwi supporters, Italian supporters, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Are we going to see the, the winner of the America's Cup crowned in race 9 or 10? Oh, if you're a betting man, which I know you are, Steely, <laughs> I, would, uh, I, would, I would think so. I really would. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if Luna Rossa take the first race tomorrow, but I would be a, I'd be very surprised if they managed to get two off Team New Zealand. All right, well, we look forward to bringing you guys all the racing. Looks like a completely different wind configuration tomorrow, maybe northeasterly breezes, so could be course A, could be course D. We'll wait and find out. But uh, on behalf of Cam and I, big thanks to all our sponsors and supporters for allowing us to bring you this coverage, and we'll bring you all the action again here tomorrow for Day 7 of the America's Cup Finals. Cheers. Come on.